All right, so let me show you how to do all of this yourself at home. You need a clean workspace, a clean table. As you can see, you need all the space on the table and uh, some tubs, unless you wanna make a mess and you're all right with that. So let's do it. What you're gonna need to take this transmission apart is a seven millimeter, eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, 13 and 15. So it's good to have yourself some organizing trays like I got here. This is uh, keeping all my transmission stuff in here. Of course, I have a manual. Find them online real easy. Right, now I got set up with a lot of cardboard to help soak up some of this transmission fluid that's gonna come out of it. Okay, so I got it out and I'm gonna start the disassembly on it. All right, it's very important before you get started taking the bell housing off right after you take out the torque converter, you take out this little o-ring right there otherwise your bell housing won't come out and then all of these are 15 millimeter you remove those so the first thing that came out with how i did it the you got the bell housings which is going to stay here to the side got the front input drum or this is the one two three four and three five r this is the input shaft it has the planet carrier I set it to the side for now and these were our seals that went right there all right, so I'm gonna lay it on its side and I'm gonna pull off the tail housing. First, gotta take these two off, 15. All right, then after you get the middle rear support bracket off, you've got the one, two, three, four, five, six tail housing bolts. They're also 15 millimeter. And my impact's not quite strong enough to get these loose, but so I'll just break them. Once I got the tail housing off, flip it up like that, and I'm gonna remove the 18 10 millimeter bolts off that. cover off and then to get these off there's a, a special tool that you're supposed to have but let's see it looks like this it's called a, it's an inverted torx and it's a e12 is the one we need this is the e10 i don't know if you can see it or not probably not it says e10 and they go over these funny little shaped bolts there's six of them see right here you see how that's shaped like a star so I'm using an 11 32nd because it fits on there pretty good because they're already loose if they're torqued down I'm not sure how good it would do it seems like it would do okay all right so we got six of them one here one here there then you got it over here Here, almost to the corner, one right here in the middle. All right, I'm gonna pull up on this here so that you can slide this here out. I think maybe a flat head will do it. I'm just gonna carefully get it out. There we go. So, this is your seal case seal connector or case to take them from pass through connector. Okay, now the Tecum will lift out. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna get these drums out. And gonna... This is the intermediate shaft. And this is either the one, two, three, four drum or the three, five R. And then this is the other one, either the, the three, five R or the one, two, three, four. So be careful because you've got uh, thrust bearings in there. Next, we've got this big mammoth of a snap ring. All right, so it turns out that this snap ring is really in there. You're supposed to have uh, big snap ring pliers for this, but I don't have any. You gotta really be careful with this because it is a bitch of a snap ring. 
you should put some eyeglasses on because you could get oil in your eyes or metal thrown in your eyes. Okay, well I got it out. Just a couple of tools, no snap ring pliers, but I would suggest that if you don't want to risk hurting yourself to get the pliers or be very careful when you do this because it's really easy to get hurt. I ran a wire. Okay, I ran a wire down in there. I hooked it onto the loop, brought it back up so it would be twice, and then I had to tie that around. I tied it tight onto the pry bar and then lifted with that. That lifted up to one side and I used a flathead screwdriver to, to just kind of get it out. But this started coming loose when I was doing that, so I had to use the channel locks to hold that at the same time. It's a very tricky process, but it can be done. Alright, then you get your snap ring and you set it over here somewhere, you know, whatever. Just don't get lost. Keep very clean. Intermediate shaft, snap ring. Alright, then pull out your seals. And then out comes the center support, which is also the low reverse clutch, 2 6 clutch. Here. And then we have the last thing is the Ravenol gear set. Got this bearing here. Alright, so continuing along here, we're going to remove the, uh, the speed sensors. So this is an 8mm, you got two bolts that hold it in. And the next thing to do before you can pull the speed sensor off is you have to unplug it. So push this down like with a flathead or something, or even with a finger perhaps, and pull it out. Alright, so then once you got those off, you want to take off the two bolts right here that are 10 millimeter. Lift this out, get a cavity there, and pull on this up. There we go, push it to the side, not up. See that? It goes to the side. Alright, set that over there. Now we first take off the two eights over here, which the eight might is supposed to have been tens also. But these ones come out first. Those two are just to the align to tech them. And then there should be should be six 10 millimeter bolts up here, or four more. Those out. And the tech them. These. Alright, so next we take the seven millimeter bolts out. Holding the Peckham. Peckham comes free. So next I'm going to remove my parking paw. Deep tint spring, I think it's called. That's going to be the 8 millimeter. My check balls are going to be on this side, so after I take the screws out, I'm going to flip it and take it apart then. Alright, take the rest of them out. This is 7 millimeter. You can actually pull this out like, or you can leave it. Now it should come apart. It does. And the check ball 
controls it should be down there. Check ball location and function. One, two, three, got one there, should have one there, and we go do. Yeah, there it is. One, two, right there. Alright, so I got all seven check balls. That's good. Real good. Yeah, there's my seven check balls, and they're fairly new, so you're not going to see any wear on these. All right, so let's start digging into the clutches here. So here we got the three, five, one, two, three, four drum. Pull that ring out. Let them out. And check them out. We still have pretty good friction on these. Nice. Keep them all together. So what I do. If you have these laying around, they're great little tie straps. Come in handy for lots of things. This is one of them. All right, then down underneath that set of clutches, you've got another snap ring. And these clutches will also come out. Take out the 456 clutch pack, snap ring in there, and it slide right out. These ones are actually still okay. That's good because they uh, they get worn out pretty quickly. But they're all right, it's good. We also got a piston in here. So the ring gear is part of the 456 crutch assembly. These right here are holding it and won't let it come out. Alright, now we got our center support, 26 and low reverse clutches. Snap ring. Come out. Come out. They look great. Beautiful. Alright, now I don't think these outer clutches are under pressure. I guess we'll see. No, not really. Good shape. I know it's a lot of clutches and a lot of different teeth and designs, but they're all specific to, to each of their each of their housing, so you can't get them confused. So. It's overwhelming, but it's, it's not that bad. All right, now we got this big behemoth of gear set, the rear gear set, which is called a Ravenol gear set. It's a snap ring here. Kind of a pain in the butt. Supposed to have a, a bench with a hole in it for the shaft output shaft to go down into. Yeah, that makes things a lot easier. <clears throat> yep, see, I'm talking about. Yeah, that sucks. There we go. Snap ring out. And there's our ring gear, the output, planets, and finally, let's have a look at our oil pump stator support assembly. These are going to be eight millimeters that hold it all the way around. You don't want to do these ones on this plate, but you want to do all the ones out there. Yeah. Not that one.
keep these all separate. You can see. Okay. Take out the oil pump spring carefully. Like that. And then you can lift out this thing, whatever it's called. Alright everybody, if you've been watching it up to this point, I appreciate you watching. I'm sorry it ended that quickly, just like that. The next video I post will be the inspection video where we're going to go through pretty much looking at all the parts. Uh, you can see my gear set here is just destroyed. That's the front gear set. Um, and I'm pretty sure that that's the noise that I was hearing when it would be in park and in neutral. So not only that, but my, you know, the, the 456 clutch assembly housing or, or front clutch the input shaft I'm gonna have to replace that uh, because it's it was just stuck in there and, and it's it's just destroyed so I appreciate you watching up to this point and, and for supporting my channel I appreciate it um, but yeah we'll dig into this here soon I just got to start making a video on it and, uh, and I'll post it so thanks for watching